Hey, from Zanon Shay here, and welcome to our Monday edition video here in World of Warships, where today we're going to be talking about the Research Bureau. And I have been learning a lot about the Research Bureau lately. I've had to ask uh, a lot of questions with uh, in my Discord and do some reading up online through the WoWs Wiki to find information about um, the Research Bureau, because the Research Bureau has a lot of things going in it. Uh, we're going to be talking about how do you gain access to Research Bureau, um, what all is in the Research Bureau, uh, but that is mostly going to happen um, after I'm looking at some things online. But the Research Bureau, briefly, it just gives you access to uh, these Tier 10 ships and Tier 9 ships in the game. Uh, otherwise, you would not be able to earn without getting these uh, research points. And it can be earned after resetting a research branch of ships. And then also uh, there are upgrades uh, you can acquire. These used to be acquired in, from combat missions, but we'll talk about that here in a minute. Uh, these are unique upgrades. Like I have uh, the one for my Des Moines, uh, which I love. It is the propul enhanced propulsion plant. Uh, the time taken to reach full engine power when accelerating, negative 50%. Rudder shift time, negative 20%. It is a beast of a... Uh, unique upgrade and then you can also buy signals uh, with your research bureau points as well so anyhow what we are going to be talking about today primarily uh, is how to go about resetting a line how do you do it well, what's the earnings what's the process how can you maximize your earnings uh, from resetting a line and so um, we are going to do that today because I have been doing that with the Shimakaze. Um, so I'll, the tier 10 um, Shimakaze, once you have reached a tier 10 line, like let's say uh, USA, you can click to reset that line. And then right now you can see there's a bonus times two. So I did that with the Shimakaze. Uh, they have seasons where you can get these times two bonuses and you can stack these bonuses on top of each other. And we'll, I'll explain that a little bit more when you look at a WoWs Wiki article. Um, but you can maximize your earnings of how much research points you get by spending the least amount of credits as possible. So I have reset the Shimakaze line once thus far uh, for times two. So my bonus is times two, okay? So the first resetting of a branch of ships will bring times two battle performance bonuses with research points. Research points can be exchanged for unique items at the research bureau and the armory. The next multiplier of battle performance bonuses will be available in two months. So as I record this video beginning in March, it's May uh, when it becomes available. They have seasons for them and we'll look at when those seasons are more specifically here in a moment. So this is the information that World of Warships gives you uh, when it comes to the Research Bureau. I know a lot of players have questions about this. I've had a lot of questions about this and I've been spending a lot of time trying to learn this and hopefully this video will cover everything you'll need to know. So we're setting progress for a tech tree branch. Your progress for a particular branch of ships can be reset only if you have already researched the tier 10 ship of the branch. The number of resets is unlimited. So you can stack these resets times two, times four, times five, times six, seven, eight, nine, it's unlimited. After research progress has been reset, all ships of the branch, including the modules, will be sold. Camouflages, flags, and signals will be transferred to the inventory. Upgrades will be demounted free of charge and transferred to the inventory. Commandos will be sent to the reserve. So this is the experience I had when Shimakaze. Um, I had all these things transferred to inventory. Um, upgrades demounted free of charge and transferred to inventory. And I earned a whole bunch of credits from selling the ships when you reset the line, um, which is nice. And your commanders go to the reserve, so they don't get dismissed or anything like that. Obtaining battle performance bonuses. Battle performance bonuses mark ships that are eligible to earn research points. Okay, So these ships that have this sign tells me that they are eligible, eligible sorry, to earn these research points. English is hard. Um, and are placed on the ships of any reset branches. Resetting the branch, uh, resetting the research progress of a branch for the first time can earn players an increased number of research points. To get these, simply enter a battle with the ship of a reset branch with a battle performance bonus and win or earn the required amount of base experience. If you reset that branch again, any battle performance bonuses that you 
have not yet activated will be saved along with the new ones. To get battle performance bonuses, research and buy a ship, then helm her in battle and win or earn the required amount of base experience. Unique items in the research bro. Battle performance bonuses are added along with a special currency, research points. The research bro section of the armory offers an array of valuable items that you can get in exchange for research points, okay? So what they're saying, uh, especially with this, is that no matter how many times you reset the line and you haven't played the battle, the ships, they basically remember. So you can see the times two, it remembers, okay? So here in several minutes, I'm gonna go through and we're gonna reset this line. So I'm gonna get a times uh, f uh, another times two bonus. So then it'll be times four. Um, and we're gonna use free experience to do that without buying the ship. So you don't buy the ship, you don't play the ship, you just simply research the ship, okay? So let's go ahead and hop over to the WoWs Wiki article on the research bureau because that helped me. I read it through a couple times to try to explain things more to you. And so here we are on the Wargaming Net Wiki uh, looking at the research bureau. So we're gonna read what they have here and I can try to help explain things more clearly as we go through. So the research bro provides a way for highly accomplished players to earn ships otherwise um, unobtainable and have some fun doing it. They, we can reset progress on a tech tree ship line back through tier two and re-earn the ships all the way up to tier 10. Here's the contents. The principle of player progression in World Warships is moving from lower tier to higher tier ships up to the apex of each branch, the tier 10 ship. However, in doing so, players often leave intermediate tier ships behind. These ships offer gameplay experiences that are equally interesting as those of tier 10 ships. And often a new, more experienced player will discover that his lower tier ships seem to play better than when he was first grinding through them. So the mindset here is that you grind through these ships too quickly, Wargaming wants you to go back and have this engaging experience as a player to rediscover these ships in a new way. Um, I can also see the research bureau as, it's another way for them to monetize the game, which we'll get to in just a moment, um, but it adds another layer on and more content for players to engage in, right? Um, qualification, a player may qualify for the research bureau in several ways. So this is how you gain access to the research bureau if you do not yet have access to a newer player. Uh, this answers the question of how do you get access to the research bureau? So any player with five unlocked tech tree tier 10 ships automatically qualifies. So upon your fifth tech tree tier 10 ship, you are going to get access to the research bro. Um, obtaining research points in other ways, for example, through dockyard events, also qualifies the player for the research bro. So this was, I think, the experience I had. I had maybe three or four tier 10 tech tree ships, and there was a dockyard, and basically they were offering um, if you bought uh, the dockyard uh, ship building token phases, um, you bought more than what was required to collect the ship in addition to the combat missions. So let's say you only needed to buy five ship building phases and then the other 19 uh, you could accomplish through combat missions to the dockyard. Um, and that got you the tier, uh, the dockyard ship, right? The end goal. But let's say you bought seven uh, of those shipbuilding phases with the balloons, and you still grind, grinded all of the combat mission shipbuilding phases, you have two additional, right? Um, and those two additional missions that you would grind in the dockyard would give you, I don't know, 200 research points or 500 research points as an example. Um, and so I did that, and that's how I gained access to the research bureau um, before I was able to get the tier five um, or five tier 10 tech tree ships, okay? So immediately on qualifying for the research bro, the player received 10,000 research points. So I get I got 10,000 research points instantly, credited to my account. Um, there were some combat missions I was playing for a long time that gained me even more research points. And I used my first chunk of research points on the enhanced propulsion plant for the Des Moines. And I love it on the Des Moines, the ship, plays, uh, the ship play is just epic once you learn that enhanced propulsion plants. In the qualified player's armory, a research bureau page is enabled that describes uh, the loot for which the research points can be exchanged. See below. Although small amounts of research bureau points can be obtained, 
some such things as daily missions, dockyard events, the primary sources by resetting lines of tech tree ships, then re-earning and playing them. A line is defined as those ships that must be unlocked and consecutively to obtain a tier 10 ship. In the case of split lines, for example, USA light and heavy cruising lines, each line includes the ships that are common to both. In this case, tier two through tier five, excluding tier one ships, line consists of nine ships for cruisers, 10 ships for battleships and destroyers, eight ships for aircraft carriers. Uh, there are two side steps to get to CVs. In order to earn research points, a line is reset as described below. The ships of the line must be then unlocked again. When each of these ships from tier five to tier 10 of the line is in port, winning a battle or achieving 300 base experience, so that was the two conditions to be able to get your um, research points uh, from that ship. And a single battle earns the research points. Each higher tier ship earns progressively more research points. Gunship lines earn a maximum of 10,200 base per reset. Carrier lines earn less than 8,000 base. More than one line may be reset at the same time. So you could have three, four lines as an example of reset, okay? This gives you an example upon a tier five win or 300 basic XP, 200, and then with each tier, it goes up. And then this is for uh, an aircraft carrier here below. So the max you can get for one reset is 10,200, okay? Right now on the Shimakaze, I have times two. So that means I'm gonna get 20,400 right now uh, when I go through and I play each tier uh, all the way up to Shimakaze and get 300 base, sorry, win the battle. Um, I would unlock or I would receive that amount of research uh, points right now. Battle performance bonuses. At each reset, battle performance bonuses in this case uh, are calculated and recorded on the ship. The base research points earnable for the ship tier, shown in the illustration above, is multiplied by any applicable bonus. For instance, the two times bonus for the first reset of a season, they have seasons, we'll talk about that in a moment, and the total added to any previous bonus on the ship. When the ship is played to a win or the base XP and a battle is achieved and the accumulated battle performance bonus uh, is awarded and total available is set back to zero. Lines can be reset any number of times per season and the base um, research point value applies to each ship for every reset. So resetting a line, okay? I'll throw this up in the description of the YouTube video as well. To enable line resets, the player must have qualified for the research bureau. Once the line resetting is enabled, a button will appear below each research tier 10 ship in the tech tree panel, like I showed you um, in port. Um, pressing this button and confirming, so they have to, there's two folds, so you can change your mind if you end up wanting that tier 10 ship, uh, causes the line to reset for all tier 2 through tier 10 ships in the line. All ship experiences move to the tier 1 ship. Mounted upgrades are demounted to inventory at no cost. Mounted camouflages, skins, and signals are demounted. Commanders are moved to reserve. Slots are added when necessary, so it's good to know. The ships in port are sold for credits at the normal sell price. So I was like 15 some million, then I jumped up to I think over 50 million credits as an example. Um, modules, whether mounted or in inventory, are sold for credits at the normal sell price. The relevant battle performance bonus research points is added to each research tier 5 to tier 10 ship. Tier 2 through tier 10 ships and their modules become locked. A research bureau, a research point icon appears in the tech tree and the ship carousel on each ship with a bonus available, indicating that research points can be earned from that ship. Okay, you saw that with Shimakaze at the beginning, and we're going to see that again here in a few minutes. Partially line resets. Especially with early access ships, it is impossible to unlock a tier 10 ship without unlocking all the ships in the line. Such a line can be reset. However, ships were, that were never unlocked cannot earn research points after the line is reset. So they're explaining a little bit here. So maybe you're thinking maybe you can get around it. Uh, you can't in this case. So for example, a tier eight ship is obtained during an early access event, but no ship below it on the tech tree. The player obtains a tier nine, tier 10 ships at the normal manor, manor enabling a line reset. After reset, the tier five through seven ships may be unlocked and played, yet will earn no research points. Having finally been unlocked, they can earn research points in subsequent resets. Okay, so here's the seasons. Each, each research bureau season lasts three months. So four times a year, basically. In each season, the first line reset becomes eligible for double times two research points. 
win the tiers uh, 5 through 10 ships in the line are played to a win, or the 300 basic speed season end dates may be viewed by scrolling to the bottom of the tech tree. So you saw that it said uh, two months before the next season um, here. And uh, this is the following dates are for the North American server. European dates are one day later. So you can see the next season uh, is season eight is the 15th of May to the 9th of August. Then 10th of August to 8th of November. And then you can see estimated for these two seasons. So basically what you're trying to do, if you time it well, like let's say the 5th of August of 2021, you reset to get the times two. And then the, uh, the season nine comes into play, 10th of August. Then you go, uh, that times two bonus comes back and you reset the line again. This is what I'm about to do as an example from the um, previous seven, season seven to season or season six to season seven, uh, if I'm not mistaken, um, then you'll get the times four. So you want to be able to save credits as much as possible and just stack those uh, bonuses uh, to uh, reset so you can earn even more. And I'll explain a little bit more about that beneath here. Note that the two times season bonus does not depend on the first line reset being unlocked or played first. The second line we set may be completed and played first, but it will earn only the base research points. Regrinds do not need to be completed within a specific season to obtain the times two research points bonus. So the RP loot. So this shows that basically these are the ships you can purchase and how much they cost. I'm um, right now I'm going for the Ohio, which is 62,000 uh, research points. You can also get the unique upgrades like the one I have for Des Moines and the signal flags I showed you at the beginning of the video as well. In the future, more items will become available for research points. See the army page for updates and details. So techniques, um, this is where they acknowledge there's several ways to do this. I'm kind of going to skip to the more important point because this video will get real long if I read every single word. Um, and you can read this here yourself. Um, da, 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 da. This, uh, play it your way. This is the longest and may be the most rewarding way to uh, earn back the ships of a reset line. Start with tier one ship of the line and play if necessary to earn enough experience to unlock the tier two ship. Buy it, repeat through tier 10. Uh, as of the first time you did it, no extra experience or credits are required. The ships earn it themselves. Oh, you might toss in a little free XP to get over a hump or two, but the play's the thing. Blowing by, okay? This is what I'm doing right now. Blowing by. Free experience will unlock any tech tree ships. So with enough free XP, you can unlock the whole line selectively purchasing and playing ships as desired. This technique certainly saves time, but you might miss discovering that the long hated ship is actually pretty good in knowing and you're now skilled hands, okay? Level up to six, the tier, the ships of tiers two through five are inexpensive to unlock and inexpensive to purchase for credits. Some players will immediately free XP past them to tier six and some will use them to earn credits for those expensive higher tier ships. This is explained to do a split and let you read that at your own leisure. Stacking resets, okay? This is what I'm doing right now, stacking resets. For a player rich in free experience, this is the easiest way to accumulate research points. The tier five through tier 10 ships of reset line need not be played to qualify research points at an eventual first win. A player can reset then unlock an entire line using free XP without purchasing or playing a single ship. Okay, this is what we're gonna be doing. And the tier five to tier 10 ships will remember that they are due those research points at the first win, okay? Then the player can reset, then unlock the same line without purchasing or playing the ship. And the tier five through 10 ships will remember that they are due more free uh, research points at the first win when those ships eventually are purchased and played for a win and accrued research points are awarded, okay? It's a little confusing. So they give an example. In season one, a player unlocks his fifth tech tree tier 10 ship and immediately receives the 10,000 research points. He resets uh, his German cruiser line. All tier two through all the way up to 10 uh, cruisers and port are sold, etc. Then he spends 755,410 research uh, free XP uh, ships plus the B-Hauls, you gotta keep that in mind, to unlock all nine ships through tier 10. 
His tier 5 through tier 10 ships are thus gained the ability to play for double times 2. Because he did this reset. It's his first time he's ever done one. It's the season 1 um, to get this. So that's why the bonus of his first reset of the season in any future time, 20,400 for all 6. Anticipating another reset, he purchases none of them. Okay? So he's anticipating another reset going to happen. He doesn't purchase any of the ships, doesn't play them, anything like that. In that same season, the player resets the line again, and again unlocks all nine ships with free experience. So this is just a guy loaded with free XP. His tier five through tier 10 ships thus will collect now uh, another uh, reset, because he's done it in the same season, season one. Uh, you only get this times two uh, once per season. He's still in the same season, so he's only get, gonna get times one so then now the times one, one X plus two X, he's now at three X. Research points award when played an additional 10,200 for all six, okay? So basically add this 10,200 plus the 20,400. Now he's looking at 30,600 research points, okay? And the next season, so season two, as his first reset, the player resets his uh, the cruiser line again for the third time and again he uses free XP to unlock all nine ships his tier 5 through tier 10 ships thus accrue access to yet another times 2 award 20,400 his reset now is stacked to five times the base award so he he did times 2 he reset it the same season 1 he got the 3x uh, season 2 starts uh, he goes ahead and he does the whole line again with free XP. Now that it goes 2x, so now 3x plus 2x, he's at 5x, okay? So now um, he then purchases his tier 5 through tier 10 ships and he plays six co-op games. You only need 300 base XP and you're likely to win them all because it's co-op. And he earns the total 51,000 research points to add to the 10,000 he has. So now he has 61,000 research points in total, and it's enough for him to buy the Colbert for 57,000. So in total to do this, he spent 2.7 million credits, 19.3 million to 53 million credits, and he played six games and elapsed about two hours total, okay? Then you get these achievements uh, for uh, depending on how many resets you've done, okay? So you can get really high up there. Okay, so this is going to be in the description if you wanna read this yourself, take some time. But now we're gonna jump back into the World of Warships port and I'm going to stack, do what this player has done um, as an example with his German cruiser line. Okay, so we're back here in port in World of Warships. We're gonna hop back to the tech tree and we're going to go ahead and walk down this line through our tier five through tier 10 ships in order to get uh, these uh, research points, okay? I have 817,000 free XP. A lot of players, the cheapest way to get these um, research points for as little cost as possible if you wanna keep resetting a line, uh, the gunboat line, the Haruguma line is the cheapest in terms of experience that you need. So it takes less free XP to reset this line again and again compared to something, you know, like a battleship or a cruiser line, okay? But I've done it with Shimakaze because it's not too far off in cost. So basically what we're gonna do is you can see, um, let's see, we're gonna come over here and we're gonna walk down this line, okay? So we're gonna pop up here. We're going to research the ship. Research a ship for 990 free XP, yes. And we're not gonna purchase, purchase the ship, no. Okay, and now we're gonna come up to this guy. We're gonna research the ship. Research for 2,350 XP, yes. Uh, purchase the ship, no. We're gonna purchase the ship later on once we've stacked enough resets that we want. So we don't want to right now. We're just stacking uh, our bonuses uh, for the research points, okay? Then we're gonna come to this guy. Research and purchase, 6,050 free XP, yes. Purchase the ship, no. Okay, now we're gonna be able to get to our tier five guy. Research purchase. Research this ship for 12,100 free XP. Yes. Purchase the ship, no. 
Okay. Now we're going to come to the Fabuki. We search 38,400 uh, free XP. In the module, the previous ship will also be researched, okay? Because you need that, so it's going to take a little more. Purchase the ship? No. Okay? Akatsuki. We searched the ship. We also have to research uh, the Fubuki's uh, hull upgrade, basically, to get to the Akatsuki. So it's going to cost us 73,500 free XP. Yes. Purchase the ship? No. Okay? Now we're going to come up to the Kagero. Research 127,400 XP. Yes. Purchase a ship? No. Same thing with the Yugamo. 175,000 free XP. Yes. Purchase the ship? No. Shimakaze. Research purchase the ship. 249,000 free XP. Yes. Purchase the ship? No. Okay. So now you can see we're in. Uh, I did this season seven or whatever it was, and there's a new season now. So I get access to reset for times two again. So right now you can see it still says times two, times two on all these ships. So we're going to reset. And this is the confirmation. So reset research progress. Japanese destroyers. Uh, times two. So this is going to tell me how many research research points I'm going to earn when I go through the line and I finally play it all. Okay. So 20,400. If it doesn't have times two, I'll just say X1, 10,200 is what you're going to read. Okay. So continue. And you get to confirm. Okay. Now, times four. See? Every line. Okay. So basically what I'm doing right now is I'm saving up uh, to, I need five to stack these research um, points five times on each of these ships, okay? So like the example we read in that WoW's wiki article, if I stack it five times, I will in total earn 51,000 research points, okay? So I only have 132,000 free XP now. Um, I spent a good chunk when I was going from the FTG to the Preussen, um, but I'm earning free XP again. So once I've earned enough to completely reset um, this whole line again, uh, we will stack five and then I'll start playing again. But I'm going to be uh, resetting this line, uh, the bonus, uh, before the next season takes off in May because I want to go ahead and pick up Ohio before uh, that time occurs, okay? May 15th, I think is what it was. Um, so I'm going to stack one more time and times five. Now, if you it doesn't bother you, um, you've been playing for a long time, you have a lot of ships in the game, you could just keep resetting these ships uh, every season. So then times two, times four, times six, times eight, times ten, you get the picture, right? So there's probably some line I'd like to do that with in the future, okay? So now when we go back to the armory, we're going to look at the research bureau and I'm going to show you how many research points I already have. Okay. So you can see it pops up here. Sometimes when you're just in other things, it doesn't show, but you can click your wallet just to make sure it's there. The research bureau. Okay. So the Ohio is 62,000. Okay. However, I already have 14,652 research points. So once I've done five resets, 51,000 plus 14,652, I will have 65,652 research points, which means I will be able to purchase the Ohio and I'll still have a few couple thousand research points left over, right? It's telling me how much I need right now. Um, so when you're I'm looking at that, then that means, oh, that means five resets. And that's 51,000 research points. And then we'll pick up the Ohio, which I've wanted for a really long time. Now, I know if you're a newer player to the game, uh, maybe you only have three tier 10 ships and you have unlocked Research Bureau now, it might take you a bit before you're able to regularly and consistently do the stacking of the research points uh, with the bonuses. Um, because when you're a new player to the game, it takes a longer time to earn free experience, okay? Um, 
one of the things about the research bureau is originally um, when they introduced the idea of moving these unique upgrades uh, for all tier 10 ships essentially um, moving it from combat missions to the research bureau wargaming did a poll on our discord and they said hey on the scale of i don't know if it was like one to five with like one i think one was the most negative and then five being the most positive how comfortable do you feel with us moving these unique upgrades away from obtaining them through combat missions uh, to the research bro? And if I'm saying combat missions, it's, if it's wrong, correct me. I just know there's a way you could grind to get them just playing the ship. Um, but they said, hey, if we move them from these combat missions or whatever it was to the research bro, you know, what do you think? It was overwhelmingly negative, And I can even throw up the thing up on screen here of the poll that they did. So that was a bit frustrating. Um, I mean, I get the ships right? These are really cool ships. It's a way to reset lines, uh, gain access to them. Um, but it's kind of um, a pain now when you get to these uh, tier 10 ship upgrades. Um, for example, the rooster. Um, preparation reload time of ship consumables, minus 20%. Priority A sector preparation time, negative 20%. And additional charge on all consumables. So some of these um, are better than others. It just depends. Uh, the Yamato, this one's a really good one. Uh, your main battery shell dispersion, negative 7%. Main battery traverse speed, negative 13%. So you even <laughs> legendary upgrade of very accurate guns. So if you get Yamato, you probably want that. Okay. So that's, that is the research bro. Okay. So this video has gone long, long enough. But I hope that this has explained things to you uh, as a player when you have a lot of these questions. Um, I am definitely looking forward to being able to pick up the Ohio um, because that will be a lot of fun. And I can give you my thoughts and opinions on this ship in doing a ship review and upgrading commander build video. So if you liked today's video, give it a thumbs up. If you did not, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe if you do want to see more. If you're subscribed, thanks so much. I really appreciate it. And we'll catch you next time. Take care.